I am very much delighted to welcome the youngest guest in our program. She has been in our list to be presented to you all. I'll tell you why. She is Angie Nong Thongbam and she has published her first novel. The very interesting fact is that her novel is also called First. The unique fact about Angie is she is just 18 years old. Isn't that cool? So yes, here we are. Let's welcome Angie Nong Thongbam inside our studio. Hi, Angie. Thank you so much for the opportunity because I'm really grateful to be here and I look forward to this. That's great, Angie. So where do we start from, Angie? I have the novel which you have written in my hand and mm -hmm. it is called First. Yes. A first novel which is very, very interesting to see. I loved your novel actually. Mm -hmm. So let's indulge in more into your novel. But before that, let's come into the fact how did you start into this uh, writing hobby? which I believe that it must have started as a hobby. So how did you uh, get into this? Honestly, I think uh, writing has always been a part of me, mm. but I never really realized it until grade nine mm. because I remember being so much in love with journaling because that's how I coped with my feelings. That's how I coped with whatever that happened in my life, mm. personal incidents, personal experiences. But then with time, I grew up and then I kind of lost touch with journaling. Thankfully, I got into the habit of reading. I mm. started reading novels, series, standalones. And that's how I found myself very... I, I think I always found writers very intriguing because it always amazed me how they can just create characters, plots, and then, you know, just turn it into a whole story. Like, how do you write the story? How mm. do you create the character how do you come up with the plot that's how i wanted to try writing a story mm. that will be mine that will that i conceived that i gave birth to so that's how i started writing but i didn't really think i would come this far because um, being a writer was never something that i imagined myself to be it was something that i found myself in mm. more like as if i was meant for this okay you know you sound very mature for your age Thank you so much, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, you are just uh, into the threshold of crossing 20. You are hardly mm -hmm. 19. Mm -hmm. So what I was imagining is how do you develop all this personality that you possess right now? It's really intriguing to me. First of all, thank you so much. Um, I think... It's a part of growing up. I don't think uh, being matured enough is... All to do about age. Yeah, it's not about age, honestly. And I think it's a very subjective matter. Mm. For me, being mature uh, will have a different meaning. For someone else, being mature I will have a different meaning. Okay. So I think everyone is mature in their own way. I believe that once you realize the difference between goodness and evil, you have the ability to uh, divide them once you get into the age and you realize that you know what is good and you know what is bad hmm. i think the choice is already yours hmm. no matter what life puts you through no matter the struggles if you choose to be good then that's your karma hmm. you cannot be like oh life put me through all of these things that's why i'm a bad person it's never like that it's all about your choice okay for those who have missed our introduction mm -hmm. nobody would be able to guess your age mm -hmm. the way you talk it's uh, really amazing so thank you have you ever thought yourself as a child prodigy um <laughs> That's a tough question, I know. Yeah, I mean, mm. honestly speaking, mm. I'm literally the last person to consider myself as someone, let alone child prodigy, I'm literally the last person to consider myself as something. That's so humble of you. So, uh, NG, let's get into your school days. Currently, you are in uh, Sam Valley School. Where did you start your schooling? That was what I was curious about. Sure, Elementary so, school, to be precise. Yeah, okay. So, um, I remember starting my preschool in Heritage, Heritage Convent. Convent. Mm. I studied there till uh, first grade. Then I remember shifting to uh, UNACO school from class 2 till grade 6. <laughs> it's actually very funny because I remember coming home from school back when I was in grade 6 and mm. my father, he sat me down and he told me that, okay, so this is your last you're yeah. in, <laughs> in, in Naco. And I mm. remember being heartbroken over it because okay. I had just started to get used to school. Uh, it was my fourth year, yes. Mm. But I had a really hard time, you know, getting used to the school, becoming friends with people. So I had finally adjusted and, you know, I had finally found my new comfort zone. Of course, nobody wants to come out of their comfort zone. Of course. So that's why I was really sad. And my father was like, you are going to residential school and that's Assam Valley School. It's mm. in Assam and mm. you're studying there. End of conversation. Mm. So <laughs> like I was really 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 sad fast forward a few months later mm. I visited the Assam Valley School for the first time it was for my entrance exam 
I remember consciously and intentionally doing bad so that I don't get selected because mm-hmm. I did not want to study. How cruel! <laughs> Plus, the idea of you know boarding school, residential school really scared me. Plus, mm-hmm. I didn't want to leave my friends behind. I had okay. created so many memories, and even though I still did bad, mm-hmm. I still got in, and it shocked me to my core. I remember trying to smile for my parents because they were so happy, especially my father because mm-hmm. because my mother even she didn't want me to go. But that's how I started my journey in aviation. Did you ever confront your dad why he did so? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean we had a uh, casual conversations here mm-hmm. and there, mm-hmm. and he told me that uh, staying in a hostel, a boarding school is a is an essential part of your life. It will teach you so many things. Mm-hmm. Primary socialization from mm-hmm. your family cannot mm-hmm. teach you because it's a secondary socialization. And honestly, I'm so thankful to him for sending me to a Sam Valley school because this element of my life, mm-hmm. the aviation part of my life, is what mainly shaped me into mm-hmm. the person I am. Mm-hmm. It taught me so many things, gave me bad memories. Memories, scary memories, slightly traumatized me in so many ways mm. as well. But I'm so thankful to all of them because I have learned so much. Mm. I have found my people. I have learned that the world isn't so kind, mm. and what really matters is to keep a close circle. Mm. Consisting of your people, mm. and that's all that matter. If you have your people on your side, if you have people who genuinely support mm. you, mm. your life will be good. Have you expressed your gratitude to your father for the, yes. his decision? Yes, uh, okay. I always do that. I mm. always do that. I always tell him that I'm so thankful to you for sending me to Avis <laughs> because I do not think so. I would have gotten to learn so many things mm. if I had stayed back. Yeah, that's really sweet because uh, right now I was thinking that if you hadn't been vocal and expressed your mm-hmm. gratitude, heartfelt gratitude to your father, then you have the chance right now because he is smiling outside <laughs> the recording booth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, he is a proud father right mm-hmm. now with so many credits in your bag, which was never in your bucket list. It is amazing. Yeah, Angie. So yeah, yeah, welcome. So Angie, uh, let's talk about your book. Mm-hmm. How did you get inspired to write at such a young age? Mm-hmm. When students dream about getting into a medical college, mm-hmm. getting into engineering profession, all those conventional types of occupation. Mm-hmm. How did you decide to get into creative writing or content writing, as per se? Mm-hmm. Growing up, I never really had had a fixed dream. I remember my friends telling me that they want to. become a doctor or an engineer or a pilot or an artist painter or you know cartoonist and all of these kind of stuff oh, and mm. i was like oh even i want to have a dream i remember wanting to be a psychologist a psychiatrist <laughs> doctor for like 2 seconds mm. engineer was never one of my options even though i was just a kid i don't know why it never mm. really intrigued me pilot and all those kind of things nothing ever really pulled me in so much like mm. nothing really interested me i didn't really have a hobby. Hobby. That's why I didn't have a fixed dream. I grew up. I got into the habit of reading, which is the like the main cause of me wanting to start writing. So like, what really happened was, um, I wanted to explore it myself. This the art of storytelling, the art of creating characters, the power you hold in you know getting to write someone's story, even mm. if they're fictional. Mm. So it always intrigued me. Words have been my strongest weapons, and mm. there were hints from my childhood itself that I'm supposed to be writing in this life. Mm. starting from journaling talking words have been my strongest weapons i used to journal to express myself mm. and i was never really afraid of speaking up in what i believe in because mm. that's how i expressed myself people have different ways of expressing expressing themselves but once i got into the habit of reading i wanted to try it out that's how i started writing bit by bit i have pieces pieces that i wrote back in grade 6 but i never really continued it because i did not know what it was mm-hmm. so it was this, random thoughts it was just random thoughts mm. but this book is heavily inspired by personal incidents personal circumstances which mm. really inspired me to write the story mm-hmm. but a fictional story So that's how I got into the art of writing. So while uh, while we were discussing outside, mm-hmm. you just mentioned that you started reading novels like uh, Jane Austen's novels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, in your fifth uh, standard only. Uh-huh. So you know all these big novels when kids of your age mm-hmm. start reading comics, mm-hmm. Supandi comics, mm-hmm. and all those Alice in Wonderland mm-hmm. uh, stuffs. How did you find in a spot that people often rare to find themselves in? Back in grade five, we had this book fair that was conducted in our school to, you know, uh, encourage children into reading. Hmm. That's how I landed upon uh, these two condensed versions, like children version of our famous classics, like Little Women and Emma. Little Women is by Louisa May Alcott, and Emma is by Jane Austen. And Alcott and 
Austin both they are classics writer and literature student till this day they study their writings their work true true it was very thin because it was just the children's version of it i really loved little women so much that i read and read and read and started doing research on them then i remembered nagging my father to get me the original books mm-hmm. but once the original complete little women came i just couldn't get into it because the old english it was so hard for a mm-hmm. grade 6 get to get into right, it right. but i still tried so that's how i got into the habit mm-hmm. of reading another book that really that really got me into reading was the pretty little liar series by mm-hmm. sarah um harvard i forgot her title pretty little liars was her first was a debut book and it's a series of 8 to 9 books i remember completing it mm-hmm. in just a matter of weeks i guess because it really got me into reading so that's mm-hmm. how i started reading because it helped me escape reality mm-hmm. and escaping reality as a reader is one of the best things you'll ever experience <laughs> you know the world of imagination is mm-hmm. really really yes, addictive yes. Mm-hmm. that's what took over you i yes, believe yes. Mm-hmm. yeah so at mm-hmm. that age of yours yes. did you try reading the mystery series like that of uh, shitney selden or Sherlock Holmes series I was never really a mystery fan mm-hmm. my main genres were coming of age stories mm-hmm. and romances I believe that the first of everything the first of everything that you experience mm-hmm. kind of creates a standard for what you look into it like I also got into mystery books mm-hmm. but not mm-hmm. because of Sherlock Holmes or Harry Potter I was never a potterhead and I was also never a fan of Sherlock Holmes To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Cristo a fantasy romance which follows enemies to lovers trope I think Chetan Bhagat will be my inspiration I don't know I always found Chetan Bhagat's writing very easy to grasp very easy to understand mm-hmm. I really take inspiration from his writings yeah very easy to connect with mm-hmm. the readers yes so chetan bhagat i believe is one of your favorite authors yes apart from him who are the authors that you would wish to name a few if i have to name would be john green of course mm. because looking for alaska is a masterpiece then alexander cristo because of uh, the killer kingdom another indian writer that i really read is nikita singh she also writes beautifully mm-hmm. i can connect to her then yes holy jackson a good girl's guide to murder even though i had a very painful headache i was so addicted to this book that i remember skipping classes on purpose <laughs> and and asking my our dds mm-hmm. to let me go to the infirmary our school hospital mm-hmm. so that i could read <laughs> i could read okay that's that's kind of an impact a good girl's garden murder had mm-hmm. on me so yeah mm-hmm. holy jackson quite an interesting fact mm-hmm. that you yes. punk uh, your classes to you know continue reading your favorite uh, novel my books have been confiscated so many times because i was reading in classes i was reading during classes mm-hmm. i was reading when i was supposed to be doing my homework mm-hmm. and i remember getting left right and center from my teachers because i would always get caught now it's very funny because like those same teachers mm-hmm. came up to me and congratulated me for the, for the book mm-hmm. and reminded me of those moments when i got caught laughing and telling me that they are proud of me okay so nothing could distract you nothing so it's it's pretty i would say it's lovely to see your academic records i have yeah, your resume um, in my thank hand thank you so much yeah grade uh, 10 icsc mm-hmm. board you crossed uh, 90 93% mm-hmm. so it's really amazing grade 11 finals it's 92% grade 12 yeah we are awaiting the result uh, best of luck for that as well thank you so much but uh, yeah it's it's really nice to see your academic records as well so in your resume i could also see other uh, overall school prizes that you got a black tie you know reader of the year vocalist of the year so it's really amazing to know that you are a multi-talented little girl thank you so much so speaking of since you have mentioned western music you got the vocalist of the year 2022 23 i would be expecting a few lines from you however out of practice you are but still since you got the prize it's really nice to you know present two lines or so <laughs> I am really out of practice because I remember the last time I actually sang in front of people with practice mm-hmm. was back in grade 10 or mm-hmm. 9 I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Then I got into class 11 and I was also the choir captain of our school. That's why I got so busy with choir that I never really sang. Mm. I never really polished my own singing skills. Mm-hmm. I'm really out of practice so don't mm-hmm. expect much. It's but okay. I'll be singing the bridge part of Back to December by Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. 
miss your tan skin, your sweet smile, so good to me, so right. And how you held me in your arms that September night, the first time you ever saw me cry. Maybe this is wishful thinking, probably mindless dreaming. But if you loved again, swear I loved you right. I'll go back in time and change it, but I can't. So if the chain is on your door, I understand. So this is me swallowing my pride, standing in front of you, saying I'm sorry for that night. I go back to December all the time. It's it's really hard to you know hold back uh, the urge to clap for you. Mm. If it was an open space, I would have done that. But it's really really amazing. I am very satisfied with your singing skills as well. So you were a choir leader, right? Yes, I was a choir uh, leader. That was one of your passion as well, I believe. Yes, I really loved singing. And I swear I was better back then. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I got out of practice and got so busy with choir. Choir mm-hmm. really took up most of my time. Also, of course, uh, being a choir leader was also had a package of its own stress. Mm-hmm. Really took a toll on me, but I did it because I wanted to. I really got out of practice, and I think that's how I lost touch with singing. Mm-hmm. So, what is your long term plan? As in, we know that you are really interested into creative writing or content writing. Mm-hmm. But uh, if we be realistic, this is a field which is entirely, if not entirely, that it is kind of novice in India, mm-hmm. more so in Manipur. So, mm-hmm. comparatively, putting the realistic as well as your mm-hmm. passion into a, a platform, mm-hmm. uh, what are you deciding? What you should pursue as your career? I know for a fact that I have to be realistic no matter what, and I know that being a full time writer is not a very realistic career. Mm-hmm. It will not be able to help you pay your bills mm-hmm. unless you are someone you are a best selling author. Mm-hmm. That's why I want to study journalism or creative writing if I get it, and maybe work in a publishing house. Try being a journalist because that will provide me with the financial security. Mm-hmm. But my dream will always be. to be a full time writer so like no matter what i end up becoming to help me secure financially mm-hmm. i will always continue to write books and one thing that i really believe is 90% of life is confidence not even 90% 95% of life is confidence i'm really confident in my potential as a writer i know that even if i do not become someone well known or someone well known through my books now mm-hmm. i know that at least one of my books will do good mm-hmm. and it will give me the you know the name the recognition that i have always dreamed of even if it's at the age of 80 i do not mind i do know that one day i will make it as a writer so that's the confidence that i have i will never give up on writing because this is more than just a coping mechanism for me this is who i am this is what actually defines me mm-hmm. so yes yeah have you ever visited the literature festival jaipur literature festival to be very precise uh, such types of festivals going in and around india uh, not really but I would love to. I've always dreamed of visiting a literature festival because imagine being surrounded by something that you actually love, like mm-hmm. such a dream. So mm-hmm. yes, I would love to visit literature festivals no matter where is it happening. Let college start, I will go. Okay. The famous writers coming in, mm-hmm. you know, yes. reading their part from the novel that they have written. It's such a wonderful experience. I must yes. say that you should visit those places. Uh, thank uh, you so much. Yeah, welcome. As per your future plan, you you were planning to go abroad and get more into this mm-hmm. so what are your plans where are you planning to visit the reason why i want to go abroad is just because of creative writing mm. i know that many kids my age dream of going abroad because of just the name of it you know i don't know it's all about the trends i believe mm-hmm. and it's all about you know being cool and i'm not going to sugarcoat it i know for a fact that many kids many teenagers my age want to go abroad because of the name of it because it will make you cool personally that's not for me because i am very much happy mm-hmm. here itself i want to study in india because i feel like india does not really lack anything but the only reason why i want to go abroad is because india does not offer creative writing as a course in mm-hmm. any university okay i mean ashoka does but as a minor not as an honors uk and ireland us they all provide creative they all offer creative writing as a course mm-hmm. so that's the only reason why i want to go abroad but even if i don't end up going abroad in my undergrad mm-hmm. i will surely surely go for my masters because i will not 
rest in peace until I get a degree in creative writing <laughs> because that has always been my dream. Mm. Uh, in your resume, I can also see that you took part in a drama contest competition. Yes, right? yes. Where you took part in the drama competition and won the most outstanding script. Yes. How did that happen? That drama competition was actually an IPSC event. Mm-hmm. IPSC uh, event is, is an inter-school event that mm-hmm. our school always participates in. IPSC isn't only, uh, you know, it's not only for one activity or sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have IPSC soccer, IPSC basketball, mm-hmm. IPSC archery, IPSC swimming, IPSC dramatics, music, dance, you name it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually took part in IPSC Theatre and Dramatics. It mm-hmm. was actually online because we couldn't go for it since it was clashing with our exams. So we had to submit it online. It was a teamwork. The team was pollution. Our entire team wrote the script together. Mm-hmm. One of my friends, GK, he was the one who put words into it. But we were all a part of writing the script. I believe what really helped win this award was the plot twist that we had at the end. Uh, do you want me to t- tell you the plot twist? Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so... so so we actually wrote the play that that follows earth being all beautiful and all and we think that pollution is what is actually causing earth harm like we always think that pollution is the reason why earth has become so dirty and mm-hmm. not as beautiful and not as fresh as before but the main reason is us humans mm-hmm. pollution didn't just create itself we humans created it so we portrayed this entire plot into a story i was a human Uh, one of my friend her name is adela she was the you know, pollution and gk himself was earth so um the play starts off with a human loving earth in a very pure way but pollution comes in and destroys the beauty of earth mm-hmm. but then at the end the human turns out to be the real villain so mm-hmm. that was the plot twist right that's so i believe that was the main reason why we won the award Okay. With all your talks, mm-hmm. I'm assuming that, you know, you must be a quiet little girl in your school, getting indulged in your books, in your book reading session. But uh, seeing your resume is altogether a very different thing because you are, uh, you know, really into all yes. these different types of co-curricular activities. So if I happen to ask any one of your friend how NG is, mm-hmm. how would they describe you? First of all, I would like to add that I was never the shy, introverted kid. I'm actually very interested. Introverted. I'm into socializing. I do not mind walking up to a random stranger and just starting to talk to them. I believe that it's never a harm to you know get to know people because I think life is all about being diplomatic and as many connections as you have, the more you know useful it is for you. And secondly, uh, my friends. Okay, so <laughs> hard, hard, tough question. Yeah, think yeah, about it. yeah. Okay, so one mm. general adjective that they all will use mm. would be. extroverted <laughs> extroverted i talk a lot okay. i talk a lot one word would be extroverted mm-hmm. some of them would uh, i don't know i don't know <laughs> because like even though i have a few adjectives in my mind mm. i don't want to come across as someone okay let me make it easy for you i have five words for you uh-huh. bubbly chubbly outspoken effervescent and smart do you agree with it um <laughs> No, really i i think my friends would choose outspoken okay that's great yeah Okay so Angie it was a really interesting session that I had with you inside a studio yes quite an enriching and uh, I got enlightened with so many stuff that I didn't know you in your age all this experiences that you have had I suppose that person would take 50 years or so to collect all these experiences that one can have in his or her lifetime so what would you wish um, India should treat towards the passion that you have right now and that is writing how should be the outlook of indians or india as a whole uh, can you please reframe the question as in like writing mm-hmm. is a field we can say that it is a road less traveled mm-hmm. not many people dare to dream mm-hmm. about getting yes. into writing yes. so how should be the outlook of india towards this passion of yours what would you like india to treat creative writing or content writing in our discourses or as a career i believe i have a very precise answer to this mm. i'm all about you know respecting people's choices mm. no matter how much i love writing no mm. matter how much i love words and literature does not mean i will try to project it on to someone else so like even if he or she is my closest friend if they are not into literature if they are not into reading books if they are not into this field as a whole I'm no one to try projecting it onto them hmm. but surely I would expect them to respect it 
because you do not have to necessarily like something or someone but respecting it as a whole is very important very necessary i would like for people to know that it's up to you you get to decide what you want to like you get to decide what you like you get to decide what you do not like because it's your life it's not only about content writing it's not only about reading or books or literature it's important that you at least respect it hmm. because it's someone's life it's someone's passion it's someone's career so like one thing that i would expect them would be even if you do not like reading even if you do not like literature i would like it if you would respect it because just like me uh, it's what some people use it to define mm-hmm. to define themselves it's i know people who literature safe who uh, you know depended on literature to cure themselves from their own tough phases in life mm. i do not expect people to like reading i do not expect people to like literature as a whole mm-hmm. but i would really like it if you would respect it uh, that is uh, people's reaction uh, what would you like the government to do um first start off by introducing creative writing as a course one point mm. Mm. how are writers supposed to grow from it professionally if you if you will not give them the practical aid and exactly. studying it as a course mm-hmm. will give them the practical aid mm. and no matter how talented you are if it's not polished it's useless mm. me um, and creative writing is the polishing that i need i would love to study creative writing as my b honors but unfortunately i cannot that's a good aspect we hope the government works on it yes so ng i have some list of prestigious award for authors and writers yes. that mm-hmm. you can aim for since you are really serious into writing mm-hmm. so literature awards you aim for say suppose you have a booker prize you have nobel peace prize for literature and a pulitzer prize to name few so what are the list in your mind that you would wish to aim for thank you for your question mm. i would be honored if i am to get any of the prizes that you mentioned mm-hmm. but honestly speaking i'm not doing it for any award i'm not doing it for the recognition i'm not doing it for the fame i'm doing it be- it's because it's what defines me if i get to sustain a living from doing what i love that is writing that's more than enough for me not everybody gets to do that get to combine passion and career if i get to do that that's more than enough for me Okay that's really great. I really wish that your book your first mm-hmm. book yes by the name first is a best selling novel. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah so uh, what would you like to wish to the youngsters of your age the kids of your age how they should be they should perceive this uh, career. I have a message for them but but it's not only for this career I mean that a career as a writer. Mm-hmm. This may sound very cliche mm. but uh, I'll just say it to whoever is listening right now who's my age or even younger than me. Mm-hmm. If you love something have the courage courage in yourself to do it. If you do not do it nobody is going to do it for you. There will be many challenges but if you cannot love your dream your passion enough to think that all of these challenges will be worth it then I do not think so you really love that. Have enough faith in yourself that you can do it no matter what circumstances the struggles that life throws at you. Uh, those are really oh inspiring words yes. and best of luck to you as well. Thank you so much. Okay. So, NG, thank you so much for visiting us, visiting our studio, and uh, best of luck to your thank future you. endeavors. Thank you. May God bless you every day and your entire life. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. This really means a lot to me. Thank you to you. Uh, thank you okay. to my father for uh, <laughs> g- giving me the opportunity to do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, since I have the chance, I would like to say that I'm really thankful to my parents because I have people in my life who I know have been forced upon by their parents to take up a certain subject, to take up a certain thing, to mm-hmm. be something that I that they really do not want to be. Mm-hmm. Being a doctor, even though they are not good in maths or science, it's really sad because their individual talent is not getting any platform to showcase their talent. Mm-hmm. So like, it's really, really, really sad. My story on the other hand is completely different so like i never really expected them to support me in such a field because it is a road that is less traveled mm-hmm. and it is kind of very unrealistic career so mm-hmm. but them giving full support to it is actually something that many kids will only dream of there are many kids who who like to be a lawyer or you know maybe a pilot mm-hmm. or a teacher or a professor but their parents are telling them that you have to be, either become an engineer or a doctor I'm really thankful to my parents. Uh, I'm really thankful to you. I'm mm-hmm. really thankful to all in the radio station for giving me this opportunity because it actually means so much to me. Because if you had told the seven-year-old Angie that she would be giving an interview like this in all India radio station at 18, mm-hmm. she would have just laughed at you. 
because <laughs> it is something that I could only dream of and mm-hmm. this very opportunity is one step nearer to my dream. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for making me feel like my dreams are appreciated. My efforts are not in vain. Whatever that I dreamed of and I believed in are not naive or mm-hmm. daft actually means a lot. Okay. Thank and you so God much. bless. Thank you so much.